They were here before by 3 Samuels chapter 18. Nathan. I am mesmerized by the scene as it unfolds in front of me. So much so that my fight or flight instinct doesn't kick in right away. And I am paralyzed both literally and metaphorically. I stand there incapacitated for God knows how long. How could this calm and hospitable community just erupt into utter pandemonium? The Shangana people are renowned for their peaceful ways, which is natural as they're surrounded by nature for miles and miles. Therefore, they have become one with their surroundings. I wonder how did things suddenly escalate so quickly from being worried about Ladry's dying to now worrying about Tasia's safety. Come to think of it, I know that in the recent past, there has been a spate of xenophobic attacks against foreigners, but not Americans, mostly migrants from the continent. I'm at a loss. Why would they react to Casey in this way? Because apparently she was their target. Obviously, Casey is an American. Sure, she looks like us, but there are telltale signs in her mannerism and aura of entitlement. If in nothing else, her mode of dressing is conspicuous in this intentionally antiquated habitat. How could something like this happen? It was my job to protect them. I had one job, but instead I brought them into the den of lions. Shan, I have often heard people talk about a defining moment. This place in time will forever be mine. While I stood there being embraced by invisible forces with such a deep awareness of harmony, it seemed like I stepped out of my body for a minute. I was transported to a scene when there were literally thousands, sorry, where there were literally thousands of people working, talking, just an overpowering sense of community. In fact, some of them look exactly like me and my family members. And although no words were spoken, well, that's not accurate. None that I could grasp the usual way. Their words seemed to flow over me and flow through me. Also, there is a distinctive quality in how they address each other, a kind of authentic reverence. I watch as this quality vanishes in the wind. As in the same field of vision, the goodwill is broken by strange visitors. In my mind, I discern that they are slave traders, but in the people's perception, they are just visitors. That's the other piece to this vision. I perceive instinctively what and how they see. Someone comes close and touches me, and as I turn and look in her face, into her brilliant eyes, Immediately, I know that she is a significant part of me, an aunt, no, a great, 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 great grandmother. She looks exactly like me, except older, but she wears absolutely no wrinkles, and there in the smile, my mother's smile. However, despite the beauty of the moment, there is an immeasurable sadness, a great longing for things long lost or stolen. So many things have been lost or stolen. I want to cry a million tears for her, for their way, for my ancestors, who have returned to let me know that they were here before. And I now know for sure that because they were, I am, and I have a right to be here. That has got to be the most liberating piece of knowledge that can be transmitted from one generation to the next. In that moment, I vow to own my place in the world and not shrink to accommodate bigots, imperialism and other such ideologies entrenched in racism to keep me and others like me out of our rightful place. Suddenly, she's saying something very hurriedly, but I can no longer comprehend what she's saying. There is now a look of terror in her eyes and a new urgency in her actions. Vigorously, she's pushing me 
pushing me away with every ounce of energy that she has to spare. And she's exclaiming, Fuma. There is a, a, an abrasive sound, like an explosion, and immediately I am back in the present, and someone screams a gut-wrenching cry, and a, road, a word erupts from me, run. I quickly examine the angry scene, but who are they angry with, and why? With great horror, I realize it is Cassia. She is hunkering down with hands raised across her face, in a protective stance, screaming bloody murder in a way I have never seen her before. I think those skinny arms will not protect her, not now, not ever. I'm terrified and fear pushes me into action. I grab the keys from Nathan's pocket because he too is in a trance-like state and rendered motionless as if riveted to the spot. I shake him with, while simultaneously trying to get the driver's door open. Every fiber of my being is, ho is hollering, leave, save yourself. She's not worthy. I don't know where that comes from, but intuitively I know that I cannot leave my friends. I am halfway in the car, one hand pressing hard on the horn, while simultaneously reaching up to slap Nathan in the face. Instantly he comes alive, like I have activated him, and not a moment too soon. As the mob is occupying too much of our personal space, everything happens in, a, in high definition, slow motion. He grabs Casia, throws her in the back seat, tucks her in and jumps in the passenger seat next to me. I really don't want to harm anyone, but in, it is either them or us, and my survival instincts have kicked into high gear. I reverse a little, horn blaring, and then I accelerate away from the unsettling crowd that is getting thicker by the minute where did so many people come from all of a sudden i am pretty sure there were not that many people milling around when we first got here we drive for about 30 minutes and once we clear the village we stop to check on casia she she is breathing but just barely she is going into shock Shock is a paradox as it's, it is both beneficial and destructive to the human body. It provides a respite in times of crisis, but can lead to a potentially dangerous outcome. For instance, a cardiac arrest. I pray silently that she is not, that this is not the case. I yell at Nathan, we need to take her to a hospital. He says, no, there's not enough time. It's too far. What are we going to do then? I scream. We can't just keep her here. What if she had a heart attack or suffered internal bleeding? Apparently, he arrives at a decision that he is certain of. We have to take her to my village. My Aunt Oishma will take care of her. Silently and vehemently, I pray that she can be trusted and she won't turn savage on us like the Shangana people. With his newfound certainty, he confidently takes the steering wheel as I move to the back to, to offer whatever comfort I can to Casia, keeping her face moist with, with ice from our picnic. How could such a beautiful day take such an ugly turn? I look out the window as the rain approaches from the west. I smell the rich, earthy aroma before I see the first drop. I close my eyes as the raindrops hit the car angrily. Even the weather has turned against us. <laughs>